So here's a pretty typical situation. You spend hours or days building the perfect looking website, then you run it through GT Metrics and you get a score like this. There's nothing more disheartening than finding out that your site is just slow to load. In this case, what exactly are our options? Well, there's various different ways you could approach this. You could adjust the server setup. You could go through and adjust the HT access. You could set some caching up. You can use a content delivery network or CDN. Various different options. But in this video, I'm going to show you one plugin that's going to give you a massive bang for your buck. When I say buck, it's basically free. If you want the pro version, you can upgrade, but you don't need to. You'll get amazing results with just the basic free version. So let's just jump into WordPress, install the plugin, go to the setup, and take a look at what the end results are. I'm Paul C, and welcome to WP Tuts, the channel where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon to be notified of our weekly new content as soon as it's added to the channel. So I'm sure we've all been in this position. We've used a theme that's pretty fast loading. In this example, we're using Ocean WP. I'm using Elementor Pro to create my pages and everything is looking good. I've optimized my images and done all those normal things. But how can we improve this? Well, let's just jump over into WordPress. And we're going to go into the add plugin section and we're going to add in one specific plugin and that is Swift, Swift Performance Lite. Now this is the free version, there is a pro version which you can upgrade to with some additional features but we're going to stick with the Lite version, the free version for this video. I'm going to install it. Once you've installed it we go to the very simple setup routine and then we'll take a look at the results. So let's just activate this. Once we've done that, we'll take it into a wizard that allows us to go through the different steps and configure everything the way we want. It's a pretty simple setup, nothing too complex in there. And let's take a look at doing that next. So once we've activated the plugin, we're taken through a simple five-step wizard. First things first, we've got the welcome. I'd recommend taking your time and reading through all these different options to make sure you configure it the way you want. But let's just start the wizard. So the first thing we've got is the caching mode. And you can see it comes up, checks the requirements, make sure that everything is okay. Then we can jump over to start dealing with how we want the caching to work. We've got three basic options, the time-based, action-based, and intelligent mode. Then we've got some different options below. Now, this is one of those things that if you're not too sure how this works, go with the basics, just have a little read, see if it kind of fits to your particular sort of setup. You can see we've got an option for Cloudflare. So if you are using that CDN, which is free if you want the basic plan, just enable that. Or if you're using Varnish, then you can enable that to make sure that everything works in conjunction with each other. We've then got three different options. We've got the time-based mode, action-based, and intelligent. And you can see that each one has various different settings and depend upon how you've got your site set up will depend upon which you think is going to be the best option. Now for me, I'm going to simply go with the time-based mode. I'm going to leave everything else checked. They're all fine. I'm not going to worry too much about that. But obviously, if you know that these are different for you, check or uncheck, depending upon your particular circumstances. We'll jump over then to the optimization. And again, we've got a couple of different choices. We can do cache only, minimal optimization, or full optimization. Now, this, again, is entirely up to you. I kind of like the full optimization, which will optimize all the CSS and everything. You've then got some specific different options we have, enabled or disabled, like the disable emojis, bypass, CSS, import, and so on. You can then see we've got a couple of options that are not checked, like optimize in background. Now, again, have a read through what it says on there, because these are going to be dependent upon your particular server setup and use what you think is the best for you. If you find you get problems, you can jump into tools in the admin section of WordPress and you can come in and you can change anything you set up during this wizard. So don't think that once you've done this, you're kind of stuck with it. You're not. You can come back in and change as and when needed. Now for me, I'm going to make sure that these both are checked. We've got optimizing backgrounds. So it says in some cases, optimizing the page takes some time. So what this is going to do is it's going to do it in the background so you don't take a hit when you've got different visitors on the site. And the optimize, sorry, the limit simultaneous threads, if you're on shared hosting, which probably most of us are, then it's worthwhile limiting this. And I'm going to go with a value of three. That gives me pretty good results. And I'm going to jump over to full optimization as well. Click on continue. 
Then we've got the option for media. And you can see we've got things like lazy load images, lazy load iframes. This means that when they're not on screen, it's not going to load them. Only when you start scrolling downwards is it going to fade those images in so you get a nice sort of experience that doesn't require everything to be loaded, which will speed up just the overall usage of the site itself. You can see we've got things like then optimize image on upload and keep original images. It's only available to the premium version. And if you're using something like Insanity or you're dealing with short pixel, for example, you may already have options to be able to optimize your images. If you think this is something you'd like and you'd like to keep everything all contained inside the same plugin, then I'd highly recommend checking out the pro version of this. The link will be in the description below so you can take a look at some of the other things you've got available. We click on continue and that should be the last step. So we've gone through the wizard. We're going to leave it at that and go and take a look at GT Metrics now and see what result we get just from going through that basic wizard. Nothing more than that. So do back to dashboard and then we'll jump over to GT Metrics and we'll just retest the page now and see what scores we get. So let's hit retest, let it run through. So just remember the figures at 50 and 51, pretty low scores. So we'll retest that, let it go through and see what we get from our update using that plugin. Boom, there we go. How's that for a result? So from 50 and 51 to 196. If we take a look, we get A's on pretty much, well, we get A's on everything on there. And if we jump to Y slow, you can see the only thing we get a D on is because we're not using any kind of CDN. Now to get even better, you could simply use something like Cloudflare. We use the free plan on there and that should then up your CDN option from D to a higher figure. But as you can see, it's really, really good plugin. No real effort in setting everything up. A couple of different options in the wizard and bang, you get a much, much better, much faster loading website. So once you run through the wizard and you set everything up using that, what if you want to make some changes? What if you want to empty the cache and so on? How can you do that? Well, it's fairly straightforward. You just need to be in the dashboard of your WordPress site. And you can see at the top, we now have Swift Performance Lite as a new menu entry. And also, if we come over to Tools on the left-hand side, you can see we've got Swift Performance. So we've got things like DB Optimizer, so we can run through and optimize the database. You can organize a plugin, clear your cache, rerun the setup wizard if you want to, or jump into the setup settings and as they say if we take a look at the settings on the side under tools we've got just swift swift performance which you can click and go into the actual dashboard for that so if we click and go in there you can see we've got a range of different things we can do it gives us some cache status information we can clear the cache for all caches the ajax cache or dynamic cache we can run the setup wizard we can show any of the rewrite rules we can even show the log and clear that to see exactly what's going on if we scroll down we can take a look at all the pages that are being cached, the pre-built pri priority and so on. So if you have some knowledge of working with caching software and you want to come into this and adjust things, you have quite a lot of options available. If you have the pro version or the premium version, then you have other options like the image optimizer tools, which allow you to optimize images to make sure that they're a good size to sort of performance ratio. You obviously need to have a license for that. Your database optimizer, which allows you to come in and clean up your database. Again, you need to make sure things like you have a backup on there before you do anything. So make sure that you know you really know what to do before you start playing about with any of these tools. But you can really see the actual performance results that we get when running this plugin, even on its most basic level, just by using that setup wizard, which I'm sure for most people is going to be more than enough. So before we wrap this up, let's take a look at one more test. Let's copy the link and we're going to go and take a look at another page speed test. We're going to jump over and we're going to use the Pingdom test. So I'm just going to paste in the URL there. I'm going to set this to be the closest one to me, which is Stockholm, because I'm in the, the UK. We'll hit Start Test and we'll let that run through and see what results we get on this one, as opposed to the GT Metrics. So you can see already getting some pretty good scores in an overall grade of 94, a page size which is pretty good. Low number of requests, low load time, and faster than 96% of other sites tested. So pretty good. We can obviously go in and adjust some things and we get some notifications of what we need to sort of take a look at, like remove query strings from static resources and so on. But again, I just wanted to give you a demonstration of what this plugin can do for you. So there we go. That's the plugin in action. Easy setup. If you want to take more information, then check out the link in the description below where you can go through and find out all about this plugin and the pro version and what that offers you.
Well, if you enjoyed this video and you want more great content, please check out these videos and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and smash the like button. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel or anything you'd like to see covered on the channel in the future, please pop those in the comments section below. And until next time, take care.